I'm showing you how to create AI videos of yourself that actually look like you. AI video generation has been out for a while, but there really hasn't been any way to consistently put your own faces into them with realistic animations. But with recent updates, you can now create AI videos that look exactly like yourself and it's super easy to do. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to use the Flux Image Generator to train a custom AI model specifically for your own face and generate AI photos of yourself. Then we'll animate those photos with the Clean AI Video Generator, which in my opinion generates the best AI videos right now. Don't worry, this whole process is a lot easier than it sounds and it doesn't require any complicated setup or programs. The first thing you'll need to do is create a mini data set for yourself. This can be just photos you've got, I'd recommend trying to find images that have decent lighting on the face and try to make sure they're consistent in terms of the age and hairstyle. Don't take some photos of when you're 15 and then also a bunch of photos of you 20 years later. I'd also suggest you include some diversity in the backgrounds. You'll need at least 10 images. I'm using 12 photos of myself. Let's select all these photos and compress it into a zip file, which we'll use to train the model. With the dataset collected, let's go and see how we can train the custom AI model. We'll be using the Replicate platform to train a custom LoRa model. To sign up, you'll first need a GitHub account. This is free to create and you just need an email for this. Once that's done, go back to replicate.com and sign up for an account. Once inside, you'll see the main dashboard. Go to the search bar and search for Ostris. We need to find this Ostris Flux Dev LoRa trainer to train a custom image model for ourselves. Select this and we'll just need to enter a few simple settings here. First, pick a destination. This is just a photo where your custom model is stored. I'll go with Tau Portrait. I'll also set it as a private model. Then, upload the mini dataset we just collected. This needs to be in a zip file. Remember, you'll need to have at least 10 images. The next thing you need is a trigger word. We'll train the AI to learn to associate the trigger word with your mini dataset of yourself so that it can be used inside of the prompts to generate a photo of you. You want to use a sequence of letters that's not commonly found in the English language, otherwise the AI can get confused. So I'll use T-O-P-R-T, -T, short for tile prompts. Make sure to remember this trigger keyword. Then, inside the auto caption prefix, we can enter a short description we want to be attached to all of our photos. I'll use photo of an Asian man, which roughly describes myself. This is just to make sure that the AI at least has a decent label for our dataset images. The only other thing I'll change is LoRa rank and increase it from 16 to 32. Using a higher value here can teach the AI more fine grained details. It's very common to use a LoRa rank of 64 or even 128. We won't change anything else. Let's create the training. You can track the progress inside the little box here. The entire process takes around 20 minutes for me. Once that's done, you'll be able to run the train model or just go to your dashboard and scroll all the way down to recent trainings. From there, you'll be able to find the IDs of all your trained models. You can click on one to find the link to run the custom model. It's pretty simple to generate images. Inside the prompt, just make sure to reference the special trigger word we used earlier. So in my prompt description, I added in the token TOPRT next to Asian man. So the AI knows to reference the training data I used earlier. And I also added in some other details I want to be included like aliens and blue and purple colors. I also changed the aspect ratio to a widescreen 16 to 9 for a landscape image. I think that'll look a bit better for the video. Next, you can change the number of images the model generates. Let's bump this up to 3. The lower scale controls how strongly the custom model is applied. I found it works fine if you leave it at 1. Then the number of inference steps controls the detail and quality of the generated images. The default for the Flux Dev model is 28 steps, but I want to make sure the details are as clean as possible, so let's increase this a bit. I'll also change the output format to PNG and leave the other settings the same. Now we can go ahead and generate images using the model. The image generation happens pretty fast, it only takes a minute maybe, and we got some pretty good results. Some of these look super similar to me. Here's an important tip. The images that you're able to generate using your custom model are heavily, heavily influenced by your data set. If you want a specific camera angle for where your face is looking or a specific hairstyle, make sure to include photos of that inside the training data set at the start. Now, using Replicate isn't free. Training the model costs around two to three dollars depending on the settings you use. And then generating the images also costs a few cents per image. 
If you don't want to go through the process of setting this up locally, or if you just don't have the hardware to run these AI models, I think it's pretty convenient to run this on Replicate. I went ahead and generated a bunch of different images of myself. Sometimes it does take a few tries to get a good image. Not all of them will look exactly like you, but overall I'd say the performance of the model is very good. You could directly use these images to generate a video, but I'm gonna take an optional extra step and upscale the resolution of these images, which is gonna give us a little bit of extra detail and sharpness in the AI video. You can skip this step though, it's not essential. To do the upscaling, I'll use Magnific. First, I'll upload the photo of myself. Then I'll change the optimized setting to Portraits Soft, since these have my faces in them. I'll also turn the resemblance up to 10. I find that Magnific can sometimes make slight adjustments to your visual appearance, so I want to keep them as similar as possible to the original image. After that, just upscale the images. The extra level of detail we get from these high resolution images can make a big difference in how the AI videos look. So I finished generating all the reference photos of myself, now let's go ahead and animate them using the Kling AI Video Generator. I've logged into Kling, let's go to the AI Video Generations tab. We'll be using the image to video interface for this. First, let's upload the photo of ourself. If you've upscaled them, make sure to use the upscaled versions. Inside the prompt, roughly describe what should be happening in the scene. I'll keep it simple with just a man and an alien are talking. Then in the settings, I like to use professional mode to get the highest quality and generate 5 second videos. You can generate longer videos if you want, but longer videos are more likely to deform. I'll definitely be playing around with this a lot more. It's really really amazing tech. You will notice that the more head movement is in the video, the more the face may change its shape or lose resemblance to you. So if you have a video where the head's turning to the side and the face deforms a bit, try generating it again. You can use this entire process to generate videos of anybody as long as you can create a small data set of photos for them. I also attempted to animate some of these in Runway Gen 3 as a comparison. I'd say that Clean did a better job of preserving the shape of my face overall. The videos just look more consistent. The motions also seem a bit more natural, like this video of me walking forwards. Here's a couple more clips I animated in Runway. It is a good alternative to clean, I just find that the results aren't as consistently high quality. If you want to learn more about how to get the highest quality videos using Kling AI, go and check out this tutorial I made over here.